Um, Pastor Pridgen, today we learned that there was a, a suit naming you as well as True Bethel Baptist Church um, alleging sexual abuse. Um, we're not using the woman's name in her 40s, claims these things took place at the church. First of all, do you know the woman and are any of the allegations true? Yeah, you know, I, I committed 12 years ago when I ran and I have always been very, very open about anything, whether it's from the council to the church. Um, I still to this moment have not been served anything. Um, everything I am hearing is from uh, either social media or from the media. Um, from the name that I was given, I have never, I don't remember ever meeting a person by this name. Uh, from the pictures that I was provided, um, nor are they a part of our congregation or volunteer in our congregation. We have everybody logged in. No one is ever able on a Sunday morning uh, to come back into the back or to my office. So um, I'm not sure. It, at this point, for me, it's very baseless. I, I will say, because I made a commitment, I would never run from the media that I have no idea of these accusations. And let me say specifically, have never done them ever in my ministry. Obviously, this came as a surprise to you as it has obviously sent some shockwaves across Western New York. Um, it, just looking at this claim that was filed, um, there are no specific dates, but it mentions 2020. Does that do anything for you? I mean, in 2020, most of the world was shut down at least after March or mid-March. Um, has any woman ever approached you or said any of these things? And I mean, what do you take of this? And what do you think is behind it if it's not true? Where do you think? You know, I don't, I, I, I don't know. And I'm not going to make a judgment against anybody who has made an accusation because accusations are real. At the end of the day, in March of 2020, I was laying in, in, in 2020 in a bed afflicted. Our church was not in session with people. From that year to almost a year and a half later, we were on Zoom. So I'm not sure. Um, obviously, I can't go into details about something that I don't know and that I did not participate in physically or any other way. But what I won't do, Claudine, because I have been a person who never ran away from a story. Now, I'm not going to tell you that lawyers didn't feel like, oh, maybe you shouldn't do this. But why, if I've never done anything, be honest. And at the end of the day, that's the honesty. Uh, there's an accusation and it's not a, uh, a, it's a civil lawsuit, which basically is saying that there is money being sought, not criminal. I've never been charged with a crime, never had a police officer come to question me. I woke up to it this morning to a accusation that I've never, ever heard in three years. Um, and so I wasn't going to run away from it because it's just not true. And once again, you have retained counsel. You well, we always, our church has counsel, obviously, but it's for me, it's not about counsel as much as truth. Um, you know, obviously, I promise you, every attorney who is watching right now is like, you shouldn't say anything. But everything in me who has worked all of these years in a place from integrity says, yes, you should. Because at the end of the day, if you haven't done anything wrong, you have no reason to now be silenced. I would, it was COVID. There was no church. I'm being accused by somebody that I never remember meeting, but definitely, definitely uh, from what I'm being told is said, never participate in anything like that ever. So. And I just have a couple more questions. Um, I don't know. Have you even read this, this claim that's out here? Nope. I, I have got specific, I mean, some things from, uh, our officers, other people have shared, I will wait to be served like I do on the council. Once I'm served, I will have no more comment because it will be a, you know, in the court's hands. And and I'm okay with that. Like, really, really, I wish I'd go to court tomorrow. <laughs> I wish I'd go to court tonight, like eight o'clock, please bring me in. Because I think that the facts will, I know the facts will speak for themselves. I want to just read to you one thing that just is so disturbing on its face. It talks about the defendant, True Bethel Baptist Church, 
negligence, recklessness caused by allowing you to sexually abuse this woman and to have access to parishioners and volunteers, including church on church premises, despite a reputation of being a sexual predator. That is a language that is in here. Can you speak to that when you no, hear I that? I, I no, no, I can't. I can only speak to the fact that I have not been served. I have no idea who the person is and that this did not occur. And the same commitment, and you know, as, as I come to the close of different portions of my career, I'm not surprised, um, but I'm not going to, um, you know, defend myself in the media. At the end of the day, I want, if somebody, we, I've been accused, you know, I've, I've had five lawsuits in the last year, whether it was about redistricting or whether it was about salaries, and I wasn't silent then. And I'm not going to be silent now, except after we've been served. And of course, I have to let attorneys uh, defend me. But at this point, Darius G. Pridgen, never, that that didn't occur. And I, the same way I spoke up about not running has nothing to do with that or anything else. So I woke up to um, accusations and people can accuse anyone. Um, and I'm not saying, because I'm never going to take away somebody's right to accuse but I'm not going to take away my right to say that I have no idea what this is about. None at all. My final question has to be, you, it's always something behind something. And truth is always truth, right? Truth stands up. Do you think that somebody is out to get you? Do you think it's political? Do you think it's personal? What do you really think is happening here? Claudine, I think that if I thought something, I would really share it with you. Again, I was woken up with this. This wasn't something that I knew a month ago, two months ago. This is something that I got calls about because of another station running it um, and basically calling me names, you know, kind of attaching. I have never, ever heard anything like this, you know, from a church that has uh, security that has, you know, video surveillance that I'm very rarely alone. So I, I look forward to anything that would go forward in court, um, but I'm not going to run from it. I'm not stepping down as if something is wrong from either of my positions because anybody can be accused. And in the United States of America, you are allegedly innocent until proven guilty. And that's why I've had so much grace for people who have been accused of anything. Because I knew in this life, in this walk, one day I could too. So at the end of the day, this is the day. And I'll defend uh, myself if it gets that far uh, to court. But what I won't do is go and bury my head in a rock as if I've done something and running from it. So any statement I have made to you or to anybody else, it's the true statement. I can raise my hand uh, to God and and to know that. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, when I first heard about it and, you know, discussing this with uh, Monique and Monique was like, no, you, you cannot be silent on this. You've stood up for other people. This is a time for you to stand up for you. And I will. I'm not going to be bitter. I'm not going to be mad. You know, my sermon Sunday is kind of crazy. It was about not being bitter when accused and Never in a million years would I have thought I would have woke up on Wednesday morning to be accused of something so heinous that I did not participate in, that I don't even know the person, and that the timeline kind of is when we were not even in session. 